My name is Dr. Zanetta Ajiman Rawlings, and I'm the Member of Parliament for Clothe Kole Constituency. I also happen to be the first daughter of His Excellency Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings and Her Excellency Nanakunedu Ajiman Rawlings. I'm the first of four children. My siblings are Ya Santua, Amina, and Kimathi. And by God's grace, I also happen to have given my parents three grandchildren as their reward for not killing me for being such a troublesome child. As children, we didn't grow up in the castle, so we had to see my dad sometimes on the weekends and um, maybe sometimes in the middle of the week. And um, this was because they wanted us to remain grounded and not feel detached from having a normal life. It also meant that uh, we didn't see, didn't see our dad every day. But we got used to it and it just, it just seemed normal anyway. I think um, my memories of him are a mixture of seeing him on TV, seeing him at uh, various um, national events, and then of course we had the moments where we had family time, which was when we were a little bit older. And uh, um, my dad has quite a wicked sense of humor. He just, he, he just loved to pull pranks on people. And um, I suppose one of the other memories I had was when we, when he first taught me how to fly. And um, interestingly enough, he's very, very precise and he's very exacting. So he would ask me to, to land in a specific spot. And if I couldn't, he'd make me fly around again and land again. And I remember on the day that he decided it was time for me to fly solo, as we came in to land, as we, actually, as we were on finals, he said I should pretend like he had passed out in the plane and um, land the plane without him. And I was very offended by that at the time, I remember, because I thought it was bad luck to say things like that. But he ignored me. He just ignored me until I landed the plane. And as soon as we landed, he asked me to stop while we were still on the runway. And then he got out of the plane and told me to go. And I hesitated. And he said, you're ready, so go. So I took off, and of course I was praying throughout as I was doing the circuit. And um, as I, I think I must have been probably on, um, I'm not sure which leg I was on anyway. And um, unfortunately, just as I'd taken off, my mother arrived on the scene and was asking, oh, and my dad just pointed up to the sky without saying a word. Oh, my poor mother, she's been through so much. And, um, but thank God, you know, I landed safely and everything. And uh, that, was, that was quite an interesting, interesting experience. Uh, my, my dad taught me a lot of things. Um, you know, most of the things I learned taught me how to ride horses because that was something he's always been very good at. I think he's a bit of an animal whisperer. Um, in the village, uh, he has managed to get his dogs to be friendly with the cats and the birds the peacocks and the the geese, all sorts of creatures, including rabbits, and they seem to get along just fine. And it's the most phenomenal thing to see because it's not very normal for you to see a dog not attacking a bird in the vicinity. And the, the animals just get along really well. And I think it speaks to his nature, um, which is people only see a certain aspect of him. And when you actually see the way he's able to create a certain atmosphere of harmony around him. It's, it's something that is, it's quite special and uh, it's, it's, it's special. I think um, one of the things that I have learned from him that I'm passing on in terms of how I, I raise my kids is his, um, his love for precision. And um, he just does not like the idea of seeing something going wrong and leaving it as it, you know, he didn't sugarcoat his words, um, but he, he, he's always had a good sense of humor. And uh, I certainly hope that I'm, I'm managing to impart some of the things that I learned to my children. And One of the things I remember whenever um, we would drive out of Accra with my dad, um, especially on the way back if it was late, was whenever he saw there were elderly ladies or you know women who were on their own looking for transport to Accra, he always made sure we picked them up, you know, whether in our vehicle or in addition with the uh, the escort vehicle as well. And it just it was an important thing to see because 
he was never too big to help anybody and he never looked at anybody as being below him or too small to be given his attention or to help and um, these are some of the values that uh, we picked up from him teaching us to be grounded to be compassionate and to regard everybody as our equal and not to look down on other people I remember that uh, my dad also taught Yas and myself how to ride a bicycle there was one morning when he was going back to the castle and he as he stepped out of the house we went to see him off he looked at the bicycle with the trainer wheels on either side and he asked his um, his guards to undo the wheels and he was determined to teach us how to ride that morning and so we got onto the bike and he pushed the bike all the way to the front gate and um, I remember I think uh, did I almost fall or did I fall and then on the second go he pushed it and he said just focus I'm not gonna let go just focus and just keep riding and he did let go but I kept my focus and I didn't fall off and that was it that was when I that was how he taught uh, he taught us how to ride a bicycle my dad is just a hands-on, practical type of person, and um, we've, uh, we've had memorable moments in spite of the fact that most of that time was actually given to Ghana and not as much spent with us. But what we had was worth it. Daddy, I would like to, on behalf of Yasantua, Amina, Kimathi, and myself, and may God richly bless you and keep you.